Okay, good morning, everyone. So today is the lab for week five is about interpolation. And first you have to download the dd.m, uh, the, the function that computer divided different table, okay? And then, you know, you construct uh, interpolation using the uh, divided difference coefficient. Okay, so, <clears throat> so let me do it step by step. So first you download it, dd.m. Okay, so you can go to, um, go to Moodle. So I can show you where to find it. So you go to Moodle. And then you go to the lab week five, okay? And there's a dd.m here, okay? So you download it and put in your local directory. So now we cover how to use dd in the lectures already. So now let me show you again. So suppose I have dd here, I just say help dd. Sorry. So you see that <clears throat> you have to enter the x values and the y values, and then DD will compute the divided difference table. And then you just read off the coefficient from the first row of the table here. Okay, so now we use it, we will make a new script. So I make a new script and my new script will be say, um, the, the question will be like week five, week five question one, yeah. So <clears throat> if you look at the, the questions, so I assume that you have the question. Then first you have to construct X data. Okay, so X data will be two or two and increase by zero point twenty five and stop at three. Okay, so this is your X data. And now <coughs> the the data. I mean, the, the function is a best of function. So the best of function is a, a special function uh, in engineering, I mean, named after Bessel. So Bessel is, um, is uh, I think he's a German mathematician who lived somewhere in the 18th century. And when he tried to solve the wave equation, <clears throat> you know, how to model wave, uh, that go through a disk, then they come up with this equation. I mean, this uh, equation, and they name after him. Okay, so the Bessel function, <clears throat> and the Bessel function has a different kind, you know. So here we just take the function of the second kind. Yeah, so then the Bessel function will take into two inputs. First is the order, order new. Okay, and the second is just the value you want to, to, to compute, okay? So for example, so in our case, you know, like we just take vessel order one, okay? And then, sorry, vessel Y, vessel Y, yeah? <clears throat> so there's <clears throat> just two parameters. First is the order, and in our, uh, question we use order one and secondly is the point so suppose i take zero i mean sorry 2.0 then the function will be you know minus 0 0.1 something okay and this is exactly the right hand side of the table so then how do you how do you define the the best of function of a vector well you just say this one is two then, you know, like three, something like this. Okay, so I give you a vector. 
So then how do you define the Y data? So how do you define the Y data? So we have a method Y, yeah, order one. And then what should be the, <clears throat> what should be the input? Yes, 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 X, X data, yes, it's very good, yeah. So the input just X data. So now you have the X and the Y data, and now you just use DD. And now remember you have help DD. So you just take <clears throat> the input X data and Y data, and you just enter DD, right? So you have, you say that computed or computer divided difference. Uh, difference table, okay. And then you just call T equal DD X data, Y data, okay. So that gives you the divided difference table. Then, okay, so now maybe let me run first, okay? So, so I suppose this one is week five. So one. So now suppose I run it and you see that the table will look like this. So the table will be, okay, so this is a table. And you see the first, the very first row <coughs> we'll give you the, the coefficient of the <coughs> of the Newton form. Okay, so you don't have you don't have to do it by hand, you do it by by dd.m, right? And now the next step of the question is now if you look at into the the question, yeah. So you see that the second step is you use DD to construct the divided difference table. And then, so maybe that is the, um, that is just that the question number two. Let me copy the question here. So, okay. <clears throat> then the next, so this is a uh, question number two, yeah. And now question number three is, now suppose I want to construct a Newton form, okay? So construct Newton form. So this one is Newton form P4. Okay, so the degree is P4. And you see that the data is exactly the, the data we just gave, yeah, so. So then how do we do that? Well, I mean, at least you can do it directly by, <clears throat> say suppose I just take P4 to be anonymous function. Okay, P4 to be anonymous function. And then what is the, the formula? Question. Uh, okay, no. So what is the formula? So remember, if you if you write out Newton form in the, um, you know, like suppose you write P four X like this, then the first one will be F of X one, right? And then plus the divided difference X one X two x minus x1, right? And then f divided difference over x1, x2, x3, 
and then you have x minus x1, x minus x2, <coughs> and, and then the next term will be the difference of uh, x1, x2, x3, x4, x minus x1. No, sorry. Uh, we start with x0, so sorry about that. So because we start with x0, so it's better. Well, I think, <clears throat> I think this, this one, maybe it's better to relabel this. I think the, 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 the question start with x0, but in MATLAB, you know, the index start from one. So maybe it's better to relabel the index like this. Relay, relabel the points, yeah? Because actually we have five points. Okay, because because in, in, in MATLAB, remember the index of the matrix or uh, vector just start from one. So it's better to start from one instead of zero. And then here you have x minus x1, x minus x2, x minus x3. Yeah. And then the last term will be divided difference over <clears throat> x1 x2, x3, x4, x5, right? And x minus x1, x minus x2, x minus x3, okay? So then if we, we, no, and actually x minus x4. <clears throat> so we stop here because uh, this degree four, okay? So this is the degree four already. So now you 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 take this formula. So this is a formula in the in the slide on the lecture notes, yeah. And now you want to convert this one into MATLAB and using the divided difference coefficient from the table T. So then, what is f x one? So where do I get f x one? Yeah, yeah, two, two, I agree, it's, 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 it's two, but, well, actually, fx1 is not two, x1 is two, but fx1 is not two, okay? So, actually, fx1 is this number. Yes, so it should be t12, okay? So, it should be, <clears throat> so you should take t12, and then, you know, you say that X minus X1. Okay, so now X1, so where did you get X1? Yes, you can take X data one, yes, it's correct, yes. So, right, so you get the idea, right? Okay, so now where do I get the divided difference coefficient F? X1, X2. Yes, T13, right? Because it's just this one. Just this one, okay? So T13, <laughs> so you see the pattern, right? So T13, and then you multiply X minus X1, uh, what is X data one? And then multiply by X minus X data two. Right? Yeah. So in MATLAB, if the line is too long, you can say that dot, 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 and you make a new line. Okay. So it makes it look nicer. Three dots. Okay. So three dots. Yeah. And then now you, 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 you can do the same, right? So now will be T14, right? And then I just cut and paste this one. Now you see the path and then you just fill it up. And X minus X data three. And now the last term will be the one. Now actually this one should be
the yeah 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 then I miss one term right so t one two is the um, the value so it should be yes so this one should be t one three sorry about that yeah and this one should be t one four yeah and this is t one five and this is t one six okay so everything is is okay now yeah Okay, thank you. So, <clears throat> so now the last term is, <clears throat> so you see, once you have the formula, you convert it into MATLAB easily, right? But you see, remember that X could be a vector. X could be a vector, so X minus data one could be a vector. So, so if a vector multiply a vector, you just take a dot, right? Because remember, X could be a vector because when you make a anonymous function, right? I mean, the input could be a vector. So make a dot here, so it can handle vectors, yeah. <coughs> okay, so this is how you define P4. And then, so I assume that it's correct. We will check it later. But now <coughs> they say that construct a, a Newton form for the cubic. Okay, so now, so now you construct a Newton form. Or cubic <coughs> using uh, linear theorem, right? So now this before you have a degree four, but now now it's degree five, and now x one x one now start from two point twenty five. And x2 is 2.5, x3 is 2.75, and x4 is 3. Okay, so now where, where do I get the coefficient? Yes, the second row, right? Because now, I mean, you, you can construct a divided difference table again based on those values. But you see, I mean, if you look carefully, this one just a subset of the previous set, right? <coughs> So then if you look at this table, the sub table, then it turns out just the second row of the table give you the, the divided difference coefficient for P3, yeah? So we don't have to recompute the divided difference table. I mean, you can, but you, know, you don't have to, you just reuse. And now if I take the, the, the second one, so first I write out P3X, is now, you see the problem is we, we now we have a different X1, okay? So remember, so I, I can write down the formula like before, okay? But now remember the X1 are different. So I can write up to, you know, the general formula is like this. We, we can just write out, this is a general formula. But now remember the, the the x one are different, right? So and the divided difference coefficient are different. So now you write p three equal anonymous function x plus. I'm oh, sorry, x. Uh, no, I think I I think I sh I should remove the plus here. Okay, start with with just f x one. Okay, so now where is my f x one now? T2, yes, okay, because now, so this one is my f of x1. Remember, x1 is now 2.25, right? So then this one is, is f of x1, okay? So it should be T2, right? And then the divided difference coefficient here is f x1, x2, okay? So you got T2, 
to 3. <coughs> Multiply by x minus. Okay, so now careful. Now x1 should be what? So what is x1 now? x dot to 2, yes, x dot to 2, yeah. So, so you get the idea, right? And then now you got, uh, you got the next term will be t to 4 multiply with uh, x minus x dot to 2 and then <clears throat> multiply with um, x minus x dot to 3. Okay, and there's an extra term. The extra term will be <clears throat> the two five, and then now you have x minus the three multiply x minus x data four. That's it. Well, actually, this one should be a single star. Right? And now remember, x could be a vector. So you make a dot here. So when it has a vector, just multiply elements by elements. OK? So now you have P4 and you have P3. And now the question say that use P3 and P4 to estimate the value for 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 a point like two point six. Okay, so this one is two point six. So how do you do that? <clears throat> So how do you use P3 and P4 to estimate the value for, yeah, so P4, 2.6, yes. So P4, 2.6, and then P3, 2.6, yeah. And then now we have to print out the errors. So print out the errors. So, so print out the errors, so print out the errors. Print out the errors. So we print out the errors. So now I will print out according to the, the format in the <coughs> in the question. Yeah. Okay. So we say that errors in the approximation. F print F. Errors in the approximation. Okay, and then you print out, so F, print F, P3 of 2.6 minus Y1 of 2.6, okay, and, and, you know, maybe you put in Float, a float, and a float is how many digits here? Three, six, eight, eight digits, eight digits after the after the dot. <clears throat> okay, and now you just take B three, two point six minus. <coughs> so remember the. The value we just assume that best of y, you know, order one at two point six give you the exact exact value. Okay, and so this is how you use the best of y function, and then you use your p three. P three is your polynomial. Okay, so do not forget the absolute value. And that's it. <clears throat> OK, 
okay. <coughs> so I turn this one, I should put the F and the in the end, like this. Okay. <coughs> you can do the same for B before, right? So we just put this one to be before, and this one is before. Now let me run it, okay? We've been computing P3, P4, but now it's time to run it to see whether this is working or not. And now let me hit the run button. I hit the run button. Okay, so I got, I got the errors here. So the errors is, so P3, you see the errors is zero, you know, four zeros here, then 12. So I think it's the same as in the question, okay? And P4, so P4, you see that? It makes sense, right? Because if you use higher order, then you get a better approximation. So the errors is smaller. The errors of P4 <clears throat> approximate to Y1 is half the errors of P3, yeah, 2.6. Okay, and then you can you can plot. Uh, I think I think there is no no question about plotting, but you can and you can plot to see how how good your approximation is. Okay, so you can suppose I want to plot it. Yeah, so I plot. Okay, so now I will put x plot. Okay, to be a little space, uh, say from x0, well, maybe not x0, but now x0 is, is x1, yeah, is from 2 to 3, yeah, from 2 to 3. Okay, and maybe say a thousand points. And now I can plot, you know, x plot my exact function special <coughs> y x plot right and then maybe the exact function is is in red yeah and then you can plot p4 sorry x plot again p3 uh, x plot in say in blue Right, and x plot uh, before x plot in <coughs> in green. Okay. See now, if I plot it, uh, Well, maybe the plot doesn't look very good. So maybe let me try to change the color. So maybe this one is uh, <coughs> maybe this one is only maybe this one is say maybe I plot only two two curves and see what happened, okay? Well, actually I think maybe I have to give up the range is a bit bigger. So maybe let's say from zero to six. No, it's not good, maybe zero to five. Uh, and maybe one to five. Yeah, so maybe I can show you first. I show you the the screen. Yeah, so well, I I show you the the screen and you will see it. <clears throat> or maybe just a figure. So if you if you plot it, <clears throat> okay. So if you plot it. 
you will see that B, I mean, the, the red one is the exact function, the best of, the best of Y, right? Yeah. And, and the, the blue one, the blue one is, if you remember, I put in B3. So the blue one is B3. And you see the, the function, the, the exact function is the red one. And the blue one is the polynomial B3. And you see that the agreement is very good. I mean, from two to from two to three, right? From two to three, I mean, the two functions are identical. Only after four, then the errors get bigger, okay? And, and now see what happened if I change P3 to P4. So now let me change P3 to P4. So, so now suppose I change P3 to P4, yeah? So now let me, um, you see that is P3, right? So now I, I plot another one, I plot that exact function and, uh, and P4, P4 now maybe I use green, yeah? Okay, so now I plot it. So now you have to plot. You can let me share only the second plot, yeah? Okay, so now, now this is my, yeah, so comments or comments. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. I, I can do that. Okay, so let me, let me try to do that. Okay, so now let me try to like three graphs on the same plot. Yeah, okay, so now let me, can do that. So now I can add on this P3, P4. I make it on the same pictures, yeah. <clears throat> so remember that red is the, is the exact one. Okay, and now let me share my plot. <clears throat> okay, so you see that the, the red one is the exact one, okay? And the, the blue one is P3. Yeah, so P3 and the green one is P4. So the P4 is slightly better than P3. I mean, especially when it's bigger than four, right? So in the region from two to three, the three curves are identical. So it's very hard to see, right? But after say four, you will see that P4 is slightly better than P3, okay? So that is question number one. And question number two, so now, now you see it, right? So now go back to the script. So we finished question one. And now, <clears throat> Now question number two, so let's see what is question number two. So question number two, well, you just have a, a different X and different Y and, you know, I mean, you can construct the divided difference table. So maybe I let you do number two on your own. Because number two, <clears throat> you see that the question are just identical to number one, okay? So, so number two, you just replace X and Y value and you can construct the, the polynomial, okay? And then you estimate P, I mean, F at 0 0.3. Maybe number three is a bit <clears throat> different. Number three is, 
or not maybe number three is the same as number two. So number three, you have average just start in inverse of x. <coughs> and then you have to construct a P4 degree, degree four polynomials. Okay, so first you have to create an X data, create a Y data and use divided difference. Okay, so the difference between number one and number two is now there's a plot, yeah. And I, I did a plot commands already, so please try to do it for, for this one, yeah. Now you can plot the exact function, you can plot the polynomial, and you can plot the interpolation points, okay? So, so we uh, just try to do it. I think number four is slightly different. So number four is, is inverse interpolation, okay? So now if you, if you look at this, okay, so this before you have a Bessel function y, and now there's a Bessel function j. Okay, so there's two types, well, actually there's a, um, another another Bessel function, but uh, essentially this one is special J, yeah? And the order is zero, okay? And now you see that now the Bessel function now has a zero near 2.5. So why is that? By looking at this table, I say that the function J zero has a zero near 2.5. So why, why I can say that? <coughs> Anyone? So why I claim that there is uh, inverse intermediate value theorem, yes? Okay, because you see the value here is positive. Right, and the value uh, at two point six is negative. So by intermediate value theorem, there should be a zero somewhere in between two point four and two point six. Okay, yeah. And now, <clears throat> well, or, or maybe close to two point five. Yeah, somewhere in the middle. So now we do step by step. We try to in in this example, what you are doing is you try to do the what we call an inverse interpolation, yeah? So, and the, the, the idea is after you try to, to find the inverse interpolation, then you will find the zero of this J zero function. So first we construct a cubic polynomial, but look at this one. The, 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 the input of this polynomial is Y and the output is X, okay, yeah? So you see P3 is a polynomial, but in Y, not in X. Yeah, and it takes a value like this. So 2.8 and Y is this. So essentially, you know, if you look at this table, right? Then you can deduce this value, right? This one is just the last row of the table. And then this is the, you know, second last and so on. So now how do you, how do you do the, how, how do you construct a polynomial like this? By using the divided difference table. Yeah, how, how do you do that? So now how, how do you do the, well, essentially, now you see that the, you have to look at this table in another way, right? Yeah. So, so now you, you do something like this. So now your, your, your input is the, the Y values, okay? So, so let me explain this. Maybe let me explain it by by uh, by a table like this. So so now you have before you have x and y, right? But now you have y <coughs> y one 
y2, y3, y4, right? And then you have the value P3, well, I mean F, well, I mean, actually this one is not F, but like inverse of F, right? So you have like J0 uh, inverse, yeah? So this one will be like X1, X2, X3, X4, right? So X1 can be considered as, you know, I mean, G of Y1, right? And up to X4 and G of Y4, right? But what is G? So G now it's just the inverse of the Bessel function, G0 inverse. Okay, so this is the function G, yeah. Right, so remember we start with this function G, uh, J0, J0, yeah. And now we construct a, just the G inverse. I mean, the function G is just the inverse of the function J0. Okay, and and then this one is g of y two, g of y three, right? And now you can construct the divided difference table. So you take this one. This one will be g of y two minus g of y one. over y2 minus y1 and so on. So just imagine that now you reverse the roles of, you know, x and y, right? And then you see, then you compute the divided different table for the inverse of the j0. Does it make sense? Well, that's why we call it inverse interpolation. Yeah. Okay, so now, my question is, I don't want to compute this one by hand. How do I reuse the dd.m, the function dd.m to compute this table? <clears throat> yeah, just exactly. You just reverse the, the role of x data and y data. You know? So now I will do exactly like that. So now I, <clears throat> I'm going to do this. And that is exactly what I'm going to do. So now. I <clears throat> I make a new script, yeah. And this one is uh, for question five or uh, five or four, I forgot. Question four, yeah. So now you have x data is is two point two. Uh, 2.2 increased by 0.2 and you stop at 2.8, yeah? And your Y data, <coughs> so remember this is, um, is a meso function, <coughs> meso, meso J, okay, meso J, order zero. But just look it up, I mean, meso function J. And just a, another type of Bessel function, and you put in order zero, and now you put in x data. Okay. And now you construct a divided difference table. And dd y data x data. Okay. And now you run it. So you run it. Well, let me. Label this one with five. Question four, 2022. So you run it, right? Then you got a table T. 
Okay, so you see that now the X here, okay, and the Y is here, and now this is your developed coefficient. And now this is the interesting part. So now how do I define P, P3? Yeah, but now it's a function of Y. <coughs> okay, so maybe let me write down the formula first before I wrote before I write out in MATLAB. So P3 of Y is Y, I mean, should be now F of F of Y1, right? I mean, now actually we don't use F, we use G, right? Use G in the, in the, in the, the notes, yeah? So, so we use G, yeah? So now G of Y1, right? And G Y1, Y2. And now it will be, y minus y1 right g y1 y2 y3 y minus y1 y minus y2 and the last term will be so this is cubic yeah you, you stop you stop at the third term yeah so y1 y2 y3 y4 Uh, y minus y1, y minus y2, y minus y3, yeah? Okay, so now how do I write it, this in, in MATLAB? <clears throat> so I, I see the formula, I, I wrote down the formula already. Okay, but now I want to write it down in MATLAB. So how do I write this? So what is g of y1? <coughs> Okay, same as before. So, so, okay, so what is the first term here? So what should I put down here? So what is G of Y1? What is the very first term? What should I put down here? T12. Yeah, okay, so T12. Okay, because if you look at this one, yeah, T12 is just G of, G of Y1, right? So T12, right? And plus the next one will be T13, yeah? So this one is T13. <clears throat> but now you have to take Y minus Y1. So Y data one. And no, only one term, yeah? And then you got T, you got T13. And then T14 multiply with Y data one, Y data two, and then T15, you multiply. Y, uh, y minus y data one times y minus y data two and the last term is y minus y data three okay so that is how you construct the the cubic polynomial p3 of y that satisfy the, the condition okay <laughs> so now so now this one is now the interesting part is here. So now we <clears throat> we use P3, okay, to compute to approximate P, okay, where J0 of P equals zero. You see? Does it make sense? So, so now, so if I write G zero P equals zero, what does it mean in, in terms of, of the function G? So remember, you know, this one 
it just may not be equal to j0 inverse of zero, right? Yeah. And remember, we define the function g is j0 inverse, yeah? Okay. So this is this is the and 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 remember p three y approximate g right or interpolate g. So now how do I use p three to find out g of zero? So now how do I, <clears throat> P30, yes, you know, because P3 approximate G, right? So we just write P30, yeah? And I define this one is P star, yeah? So P star, so P star equal this, okay? And then print this value onto the screen. So yeah, print F. P star equal one, sorry, one and how many? Three, eight, eight, not P, P star, yeah. Okay. So now, <clears throat> so now this one is the, the question. I mean, that is, uh, so now, now if I print it out, okay, then you go P star is about 2.4 something, okay? And now you use, now the next question is you use uh, Bessel J to check, you know, like J zero P star. Okay, so now you just print again. <coughs> so J zero P star. So best of J zero P star, yeah. So you see, J zero P star is not exactly zero, but it's very close to zero. So P star is the approximation of the, the zero of the function, okay? So that is, we call it inverse interpolation. You see, the lectures we covered yesterday is we try to find the zero of a function, right? And you, you remember that we have bisection method, we have fixed point iteration, and we have, Newton method, right? But this one is another method to find a solution of, of a, a nonlinear function. And we call this one inverse interpolation. Okay. So you 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 do inverse interpolation, it means that your interpolation of the F inverse. Okay. In in this case, F is J0, right? And you interpolate F inverse. And then you put f inverse zero, then you find the zero of, of the function. Yeah, so this is another method for finding the zeros of a nonlinear equation. And we didn't cover in the lectures, but we cover in the tutorial. And you see they're connected. I mean, the, you, you study interpolation already, but now interpolation can be used to find the zero of a nonlinear equation. Does it make sense? So this is the whole point of this question. Yeah, so the question introduces you, you know, a method for solving um, nonlinear equation f equals zero, fx equals zero by interpolation, inverse interpolation, okay? 
And if you <clears throat> if you look into the F0, okay, so this is the, uh, the built-in function of MATLAB, yeah? And you will see that F0, you know, find the zero of the function near initial point, yeah? So it doesn't say what value, it doesn't say what algorithm it used. Okay. But so you 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 suppose I, I try to use this one to find F0 of, of the best of function, yeah. Then what do I put in? I put in F0 and I put in um I in best of y, yeah. So maybe maybe put in like this. So x meso y zero x, and I put in say two point five, right? And so what is my p star? Yeah, p star is. 2.4. I know best of not best of y, best of j. You see? So if I use F0 for MATLAB, I got that exact zero is about 2.4 for something, right? But what is our P star? So our P star is very close. You see? So you use just inverse interpolation, right? Of, of degree three. And you got very close up to up to four digits after the dot. Yes. Oh. You see? So you 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 find zero very very close to the the solution given by F0 the command. Yeah. Okay, so I think I should stop here. Uh, any question? I mean, I can take question now. Let me stop the recording. And then you can ask question. Uh, I'll maybe share the screen again. And I stop the recording.